City planning in contemporary society has assumed that people in places should be engaged in making decisions about what happens to people living in those places. And that some independent technical professionals shouldn't decide for communities what should happen. So under the banner of public participation or public engagement, planners have searched for and experimented with many, many different tools and techniques. In the last few years, we have been committed to testing an idea that builds on all that earlier work in participation called role play simulation or serious games in which we go into a community, we have a cross-section of people in that community sit together and participate in a mock or hypothetical decision-making situation. So 100 people might come in the evening, they might sit at tables of six or seven. Each table would represent five or six roles in a community like theirs that would have to make a certain decision. It takes us a long time to prepare those simple games because we have to interview the people in the real situations, look at all the technical information, boil it all down, and make something where in an hour people playing those roles could approximate the kind of decision making that that community faces. And in these games, people are assigned roles not their own, but they're given enough information, a little briefing book, that helps them prepare to play that role. And at each table, the six or seven people playing those assigned roles would attempt in an hour or so to make a decision not unlike a decision that community might face. And at the end of the hour, we compare the results of all the tables, and people are shocked to discover that folks given the same assignment got different results. Why? Because it matters who says what in those conversations. And we debrief the results of those multiple tables, and then we go back and analyze the results of survey questions people were asked before they played the game, and then we ask them online to answer the same questions again after, and then we interview about 20% of them three to six months later to see what they're thinking, and then we do this with multiple groups in each community until we have several hundred results and we can demonstrate that playing an hour and a half game when it's designed carefully and realistically can change people's level of understanding about a serious problem facing their community, can give them a sense of what the choices are that the community has can show them that it's possible for people in their community working together to reach agreement even with the differences in their political views. And so from the statistical studies we've done, we have been able to demonstrate that serious games can in fact change the course of history in particular places by helping people consume a huge amount of, of scientific and technical information in a very painless way can bring the level of readiness of people in the community to the point where they want to now and can participate in the actual decisions. The games are not the actual decisions. The games are part of preparing people to participate with more confidence in decisions in their own community. And as I said, we can demonstrate a marked shift in people's readiness to participate, their knowledge of the technical issues, their optimism about something being accomplished. And there have been a series of doctoral students who've written their dissertations on these kinds of experiments, and we continue to do more work on this idea.